Hey, this is going to be a, a step by step tutorial on how to make your own scales. First thing you need is your razor detached from your scales. If you don't know how to do it, either look up some videos. If you can't find videos, just message me and I'll, I'm quite happy to advise you on how to get your, scale, your razor out of your scales. Right, first thing you need to do, trace your razor onto a sketchbook, piece of paper, whatever you've got. Doesn't really matter, but you are going to be cutting it out. Make sure you mark where the pivot is. Okay, next thing you need to do, just think, mark your pivot, and think what shape you want your scales. I'm just going to do a very, very basic design, but you can go pretty much as wild as you like. A nice thickness for your scales is the same as your blade. If you go too thick, they'll start to be quite heavy and feel overly chunky quite hard to handle. If you go thin then the actual edge of the blade might poke out the bottom and you really don't want that. You want to think about the length as well as of your wedge past the toe. A good distance maybe one half set of ears can go longer, can go a little bit shorter, but your wedge is going to get very small if you make if you're getting any shorter than that, really. Okay, next thing, cut it out, and that's going to be a template to go into your material. Okay, so that'll be your template. But I'm not using that one. I'm using this one because it's for a customer's custom GD. Okay, the next thing you need is your material. I'm going to go with some black acrylic. Acrylic is actually quite a nice one to start with because there's no finishing techniques needed apart from sanding and polishing. Same with it for bone, horn, as long as you can get it in the right thickness and nice and flat, it'll be nice and easy to work with. If it's not flat or not the right thickness then you need to linish it or horn you'd actually have to heat it up and flatten it which is just awkward. So if it's your first time I'd well recommend some acrylic and three millimeters is a nice thickness. Minimum I'd go to is about two and a half millimeters, maximum three and a half millimeters. Thinner, yeah, you're gonna be close to it breaking. Thicker, it's gonna get quite hard to handle. Okay, next thing to do is trace your scales onto your material. All I've done here is stuck some masking tape on it so it's easy to see my lines. You can do this in pen as well if you want. That'll make the lines a bit more visible when you're cutting it out. And by the way, I'm going to be using no power tools. So this should be easy to do for most people's from most people's tool cupboard. But I'll 
Men det må bare sin tag på tag. Mm-hmm. I thought I'd get away with the two strips. Okay, design is now the material, and we go cut it out. Okay, so the next step is just to cut these puppies out. We're going to do this the ultimate basic coping saw. And then for shaping, standing files. Nothing special. If you don't have a vice, less than 10 quid if you want a vice it would make your life a lot easier getting a little vice okay let's chop these up you want to go about a millimeter past the line don't cut it to the line it's much easier just to go a bit a bit past Okay, so scales are roughly chopped out. They're not perfect at this stage, but they don't have to be. Okay, next thing. Now's the time to take off all your tape. Any protective covers for the material, that can all come off now. Then what we need to do next is we need to attach them together. The rest of the shaping process needs to be perfectly symmetrical. So we need them together. So some people just use double sided tape, but if you've ever tried to get double sided tape off a material, you'll realise what a ball ache it is. So what I do I use some two inch standard sellotape as my base layer and then I sandwich double sided tape between it. And that way it still sticks as well but it's much easier to get off. So a two inch sellotape with one inch double sided tape Stick your other scale on as neatly as you can. Doesn't matter too much. As long as it's fairly neat. Press them together. And then from the days of using a chevette, I've still got loads of DE blades left. So I use the DE blade to trim all the excess tape off. Doesn't really matter because when you uh, file it, it doesn't stick to the file or anything. But it just makes it that bit easier to work with. Mm -hmm. 
That'll do. So, stuck together. Ready for shaping. Yeah. Let's do that bit. Right, next thing we're just going to file these scales down so they're perfectly symmetrical together and then after that we'll chamfer it to however, however round you want the edges, you might not want them round, do it however you like. <laughs> Keep your file flat and we're going to keep checking, looking down the line to make sure that it's flat the entire length. As well, use nice long strokes because then you won't get flat spots. Even for a slight curve, you can still use the flat bit of your file. If you've got a rounded side and a flat side, even for well, for quite swoopy curves, you're best using the flat side. If you use the round side, it seems to dig in and give you an uneven, un uneven curve. Okay, so experiment using both sides of your file. But I find I use the flat side at least 95% of the time.
Okay, so everything's now filed as I want it to as I wanted it to. Everything looks straight. I did actually change the design very, very slightly. But you can at this stage, obviously, if you really want to. So the next step is going to be to chamfer the sides. Chamfer, chamfer. And to do this, I think the best way is to do a 45 degree file first to however, whatever size you want and then round that off afterwards because then it'll be nice and even. If you just try and round, if you're just doing this, it might not be the same all the way around, like everywhere on the razor. If you actually do a 45 degree and the width of that file of the 45 degree is the same all the way around, the chances are it's going to be exactly the same curve and it'll be nice and consistent. So, here we go. I'm just going to chamfer all the sides and then get back to you. Okay, so we've now finished shaping, chamfering. The next step is drilling your pilot holes for your pin. Use your original thingy just to make sure that you're getting your holes in the right spot. <clears throat> and then for mine, I use a uh, an old Dremel. Use a 1.6 mil. Um, drill bit, or I think that's one one sixteenth of an inch drill bit. If you've got a drill press, it'd be much better to use your drill press because it'll be dead straight. If not, try and be as straight as you can. Okay, holes drilled. You have to do this before you take them apart or your holes won't line up. It's that simple. Okay, now this is tight. You're ready to take apart, sand, polish, and they'll be ready. Just be careful when you take them apart because if you've got any thin spots like I do there, then it's very slightly possible that you could break it. Sometimes you will need to wedge something between just to get it started off. Depends how well you've taped it, and I've taped this uh, rather well. Take your time over this stage. You don't want to have done all that work just to snap them now. Okay, and you've got your two sets, your two scales. Take some time to remove 
all the gunk from the tape. So you've done that though, rid it sand and polish. Right, I'm gonna do this next bit sat on the couch because I'm gonna be here for quite a while. So the progression of sanding that I use 120, 240, 400, 800, 1200. Okay? If you're not too experienced with sanding, it might be best for you to change the direction of the way you sand between each grip. That way you'll make sure that you're removing the grips from each level and you won't be left with horrible scratches at the end. And those scratches won't even, they'll, they'll be really hard to see until the polishing stage. And it'll really annoy you if you've polished it thinking you're finished and then suddenly you look at your scales. Oh look, deep scratches. You'll have to go back and start again. It's much easier just to change the direction and then you definitely know that you're moving each scratch each level of scratches. Cheers cat. Say hi Edmund. Anyway. Right, so I'm gonna start sanding and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Okay, we're done sanding. This is gonna be the last stage now, which is just polishing. So whatever you've got to polish, you can use that. You could use uh, rubbing compound, car polish, plastic polish, whatever you want. You could even leave it sanded matte if you like. It's up to you. They're your scales. You can finish them however you want. I'm going to use a, a bench polisher. And then that's it. We'll be done. Okay. So these are just about ready. Nice and shiny. This will be the point that any scratches, any deeper scratches will show up quite obviously. And if they show up, just go back to the sanding stage, work back up again, polish off again, and see if they've all gone. But yeah, all done. So, thanks for watching this part. I hope you come and see the second part, which will be making the wedge and pinning it to your razor. Okay, until then, thanks for watching.